If I'm being completely honest, I don't think there's any definition of a good breeder. I feel like it's a terrible thing to do to force these rabbits to have kids. I personally will never do it again because there's enough, there's enough rabbits and bunnies in this world and I just don't agree on it anymore. You yeah. wanted to buy one? Yeah, I want to like, yeah. Or are you here to like document something? Which one's on you? Don't you have a YouTube channel? Rabbits, cute, cuddly, fluffy, a multi-million dollar industry. They've been domesticated for hundreds of years and embedded into our pop culture. But what exactly do we know about these furry creatures? Why are there so many of them? One of the most popular pets in the world, and yet there still seems to be so much misinformation about them. Rabbits and their commodification are very much viewed as disposable. And what do we do with something disposable? Well, we replace it, of course, because disposability poses replaceability. You see, this is where the overpopulation of rabbits kicks in. They are the third most abandoned animal at the shelters. You may not own a rabbit, but you most likely know someone who does. So where exactly do all these rabbits come from? And what is going to happen to all of them? You might be surprised to find out. So why don't you explain what's going on with Oscar? Uh, he's in a situation where he's with a lot of unneutered males altogether. Basically, it's a hoarding situation. I mean, she doesn't consider herself a hoarder because she most loves the hoard, bunnies. Most but, hoarders don't consider themselves hoarders. But you're right, most hoarders. hoarders don't. And uh, she's, she's a sweet person. She has a good heart, but she has no idea about bunnies, uh, how to feed them, how to care for them, how to keep them safe. All the males have started fighting, and it looks like, um, looks like Oscar was very uh, badly injured. You can see on this side. This is a huge bite. These are just bites and fights with other bunnies. His back end is actually abscessed and it goes all the way down here. So these are all bite marks. These are all bite marks. And uh, his feet are just filthy. And I mean, I, this is him cleaned up and already. And his eye? His eye was torn up in here on uh, that side more, but the other side was also um, gotten a little bit, but that was the worst. Two years ago, I visited a rabbit hoarding situation for the first time. A young woman who started off with just two bunnies, both unspayed and unneutered, wound up with over 60 rabbits, uncontrollably. These hoarding crises are not uncommon in the rabbit world. With a gestation period of only 30 days, domestic rabbits can have up to 150 babies a year. The woman was unable to care for all of the bunnies. Many of them died and many were surrendered to a local rescue willing to help. But if animal control had been notified, they would have all been euthanized. As the third most abandoned animal, the supply just doesn't meet the demand to house every domestic rabbit. How often would you say people call you to surrender their rabbits? Sometimes I get a call every day. They're constantly coming in during the year and it's, it's never ending. And last week I got 50 lab rabbits wanting a place. How many rabbits would you say you've rescued since you started rescuing? Oh, I would say I, I've never done an official count. Probably over a thousand rabbits have come through here at least. Wow. I am overwhelmed by the amount of rabbits wanting to come in and knowing that even though I'm one of six rescues in Los Angeles, that we cannot take in everything that is proffered up to us. It's not possible and so rabbits will die. Breeders want the one show rabbit and so out of a birth of, you know, eight to twelve rabbits, if they have one that they think is good, all the others are given away basically sometimes for free. They'll charge, if they have a really cute one in the back, they'll charge three to $500 for one and people will pay to get a nice lop or a little dwarf and then they make some money but they've got their show rabbit and the rest they don't care about. 
and they always give them away before they're three months old, which is before they get to the hormonal stage. Sometimes we'll even kill the rest that are not good enough for show. It's horrible what happens to these animals. And so the people are taking them as these sweet little babies, not knowing what's gonna happen in one or two months down the line. They have to pay five to $800 to spay and neuter them to get those hormones out of the bunny and to keep the bunny healthy. Then they don't want them anymore either. And they all end up in the shelters or in the rescues and we just can't do it all. People who are breeding them on purpose are usually breeding them for show or for meat. And for meat, I mean, if they get sick, you know, they don't care as much because they're a food source. You see, unlike other animals, bunnies have three strikes against them. Historically, they've been bred for meat, for the fur industry, and used as laboratory experiments. The mass production of rabbits in such a short period of time has not only led to their mass abandonment, but some serious lack of education regarding reproductive health, proper care, food, and housing. Definitely I've encountered people who have, you know, gotten two bunnies and they didn't realize that one was a boy and one was a girl. But then the owner is left with the problem of having, you know, five to 10 additional rabbits that they have to try to rehome. And I've seen where people have multiple intact male rabbits and they fight and uh, had a rabbit that came in with his testicles um, lacerated, severely lacerated, and the owner refused treatment. That was the worst one. Rabbits suffer silently. People don't think of putting their dog or their cat in a hutch, right? It's just wrong to keep a rabbit outside in a hutch alone, but people don't know that. When you Google rabbit housing, what comes up? Hutches and cages. Why? Because the manufacturers are still making money selling those, but those are not humane ways to house rabbits. So we have a little bit of an uphill battle educating people about spay and neuter, about the overpopulation problem, and about basic humane care of pet rabbits. When they're living in a hutch, they're, you know, it's a small area, they're very, they're bored, they're sad, they're lonely, and it, it's a very depressing life. It's almost like being in jail, in solitary confinement. You know, rabbits are very sociable animals and they really are gonna blossom when they're indoors as part of your family. And then also we commonly will see diseases are more progressed when it's an outdoor pet because you don't notice when your rabbit is starting to have problems. Whereas if they're a family member in, in a house pet, you're going to notice right away if they're not doing well. They'll live 12 to 15 years when they're an indoor spayed and neutered house pet, whereas the outdoor rabbits, especially the ones that are not spayed and neutered, may live five to six years. What are some of the crazy stories that you've seen when it comes to this? Uh, one of the most common issues that we have in this area in Los Angeles, in the um, fashion district, there are people that are selling basically, you know, rabbits that are way too young to be parted from their moms. They're uh, probably about a month old. They're pulled away from their mom too early. They're subjected to stress. They're sold in these tiny little cages and there's a carrot and a piece of lettuce in there and they're too young to be eating that kind of food. And so they're getting a really rough start in life and most of those babies don't make it. It's, it's pretty much almost a death sentence for those baby bunnies that are being sold on the streets in the fashion district. A lot of these baby bunnies sold you know, for Easter don't survive. And so it becomes a negative experience for the child. It's not doing the child or the rabbit a favor. On the one hand, you're teaching your children how to care for an animal. The problem is, is you really, as the teacher, you're responsible for that pet and giving it a best, the best life possible. And for it to be sitting in a cage, hardly handled, you know, not spayed or neutered, not, not fed correctly. Um, not given the exercise, the emotional stimulation it needs, then you're actually setting a bad example. Three million rabbits euthanized every year in this country, at least. You know, if three million are euthanized, what's the number that's surrendered? I decided to go undercover and visit some breeders that were selling bunnies on Craigslist just to get a feel of what the living conditions of the rabbits were and to study the business practices of these breeders. One of the breeders recognized me, however, and let's just say I had to make a run for it. Um, these all are boys these. and all the rest are girls. Oh, yeah. oh. Wait, which ones are the girls? These four are the boys. Uh -huh. Everybody else is a girl. 
Yeah. So. Oh yeah, they're 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 big. Yeah. So the dogs it doesn't antagonize them. Anymore? No. Uh -uh. Oh, okay. Paws are all yellow. Yeah, it's from the key. Pooper of all poopers. Come here. Come on, buddy. Come on. So how much? I mean. Are you going to be able to get rid of all this before you move? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it is a lot of it's work. A lot of work yeah. The cleaning is, is okay. and the upkeep. I mean, it's constant cleaning, it's constant sweeping. Yeah. You've got to monitor for flies all the time. What got you into this? Like, what? For you know, her, actually, to help her learn to be responsible, learn to make some money, learn to budget, learn to, you know, those kinds of things. And then. What's wrong with that rabbit? He got attacked by um, Moose. Yeah, and so he has a, a D oh. in his ear. Yeah, so oh, that's okay. what happens when. Yeah, so chaos. he's he's uh, recovered. Yes. But he's also got a, a misaligned jaw. Or I was saddened to see the conditions of the rabbits, especially the one that had been injured due to being attacked by another rabbit. As Dr. Canfer explained, this is what happens when unfixed rabbits are housed together. But furthermore, the poor genetics of interbred rabbits were evident in the one that had the misaligned jaw. Have you encountered any health problems with bunnies that, you know, tend to be interbred versus mixed bunnies? Kind of like you see that with dogs. Definitely. And, you know, and, and I think that for people who are trying to create that perfect purebred rabbit, mainly for shows, um, those are the ones that are going to do that inbreeding. Yes, you can get genetic issues with the lion head rabbits, the ones that have all that fuzz around their neck. We do see a lot more dental issues with the larger bunnies like the Flemish giants, checker giants, they, um, and, and I'm assuming it's going to be seen with the continental giants that are becoming popular now too, is that those rabbits don't live as long and they do get a lot of um, arthritic issues, a lot of back problems and joint problems, and they just don't live as long. They're basically the great banes of the of the rabbit world. Netherland dwarfs that have the really tiny, tiny heads, tiny ears, those big bulging eyes, and so they can have some dental issues as well. So certainly, a, you know, a mixed breed rabbit is going to be a little bit more uh, healthy. The conditions weren't any better with the second breeder. In fact, this breeder kept them in such a small space, the bunnies could barely rotate. And much like with the first breeder, these bunnies were also kept in wire-bottomed cages, which caused bunny paws to blister. So cute. So how old are they? There's the, those little ones. Uh -huh. Those are seven months. Oh, wow. Those little ones. And, and those uh, ones? That one right there. That one is nine months. Oh, but that okay. one so is a lion head. So they're like adults. Kind of. Mm. They're almost there. Yeah. But uh, that one, those are lion heads, as you can see. So is this? Different. Are you gonna they have more for Christmas, or, or is this? Uh, or are you just, this I don't is it. Think so. Oh, yeah. No. You yeah. wanted to buy one? Yeah. I want to like. Yeah. Or are you here to like document? Needless to say, this is where I made a run for it. One thing I noticed though that was very interesting from the breeders is that both of them summoned their children to help with their breeding business. Bunnies are bought for children every day by parents who think it will teach them responsibility. And nothing sells a bunny more than a child selling a bunny. In order for me to understand this better, I decided I wanted to get inside the mind of a former rabbit breeder. So talk to me a little bit about when you first began breeding bunnies and why. I started at the age of 15. Um, I did it because my mom bought me two baby bunnies. They were lion heads. And obviously they grew older and then we didn't care to separate them. We, we honestly didn't care, my mom didn't care. So they would obviously have babies. Me and my mom just looked at it like a form of income. Like, hey, we can just sell these baby bunnies and 
it'll just make us money. That's That was like our point of view. How much money would you typically make breeding and selling bunnies? I would sell a baby bunny for $15. Um, we would post them on Craigslist, but sometimes we didn't get all of them sold. So my mom would sometimes have to give away the baby bunny. So how many babies were in those litters, you think? There were up to 10 baby bunnies in each litter that I would breed. And so you would sell typically those babies for 15 apiece. So we're looking at about 150 per litter, give or take, right? So do you think that that $150 was actually worth the time, the labor, the money, the care that went into breeding the bunnies, marketing them, meeting with people to sell them? Yeah, um, definitely not. I wouldn't recommend it for anyone because um, we wasted more money actually taking care of them than what we got. My mom never wanted to take any baby bunnies or the, my rabbits to the vet. So some of them did die in the process. Did you ever compromise the health or well-being of the bunnies for the sake of them being purchased? For instance, maybe you sold a bunny prematurely or lied about their age, sex, just to get them sold? Yeah, I definitely had a lie to get them sold. That female rabbit that I had, was, that was the mom, said she was pregnant. And um, I told my mom, we should tell them that she's pregnant. And my mom was like, no, because then they're not, she's not gonna want them. So just, just lie, just give it to her. And I gave them my female rabbit that was pregnant and they had no idea. Would you or your mother ever screen the buyers? Would you pay them home visits? Did you know what kind of environment the bunnies were going to? In all honesty, we didn't care to know if they were okay. I know that's sad, but that's the truth. It didn't seem like you had a lot of control over everything in the beginning. I mean, you were young, you were a child, and you were really under your mom's wing. And that's something that I see a lot. It's usually the parents kind of leading the way and the, and the kids helping out. And at what point did you and your mother decide to stop? What was ultimately the last straw? Um, it happened when it was one of the last litters. My mom decided to give my cousin a baby bunny. And I started crying because I already knew, I already knew that they weren't going to take care of it right. And they literally took it in a cardboard box and that's where they decided to keep the baby bunny. My mom told me a week later, oh, um, did you know that your cousin killed the baby bunny? And he took it, the bunny, to his bed and he fell asleep and he slept on top of the baby bunny and it died and that's when i just started bawling and i'm like what am i doing why am i like having these poor animals suffer all because of me and that's when i told my mom like this this is done we're like we're done we're not doing this anymore we need to reach the breeders try to carry on a dialogue with the breeders let them know the extent of the problem that we have in finding homes for all these unwanted rabbits and also reaching the public and letting them know how critical it is that rabbits be spayed and neutered in order for them to be wonderful companion animals in your home. It's all tied together. When people get dogs and cats, it's like a no-brainer, you know, like, oh yeah, I gotta get them spayed or neutered. You don't think that automatically with a rabbit. Mm -hmm. What do you think it would take to get rabbits to that level of mainstream knowledge? Well, I'm hoping that Lennon will help raise awareness. <laughs> Um, social media, yeah. The consequences of not doing your rabbit are so much greater because of that much higher reproductive rate. It's harder to dump a bunny that's been adopted. You can always take it back to the rescue. But people who buy the bunnies, and you know, after the novelty wears off and Christmas and Easter, you know, those bunnies tend to wind up at the shelter. What happens with the rescue groups, the rabbit rescue groups, is they are really good at educating and screening the adopters. And so that's why, you know, the people are a little less likely to be abandoning those rabbits if they're, you know, if it's not working out, they're a little bit more likely to, to know that, you know, hey, when they adopt this rabbit, it's a lifelong commitment. And if they're not ready for that, then the rescue group isn't gonna give them the bunny. And the rabbits from the rescue groups are usually gonna be healthier because they've already had them examined, spayed and neutered, treated for fleas and mites. I feel like bunnies have 
they really have the short end of the stick in terms of they're also bred for meat and they're mm -hmm. also bred for fur and they're bred for scientific experiments. Mm -hmm. How do we combat those other categories in which rabbits are, are bred for? I think that the only way that you can combat some of this is with legislative change and activism, a combination of the two. The solution is for people to go to their representatives in the government and get fines put on breeding or make it so that you must have a license to breed animals. None of us needs to wear a rabbit coat and I think we're making some progress. A lot of major designers are no longer selling fur. That's great. It's harder to combat the meat industry and we just have to keep trying. We, we're finding out that for, for all sorts of reasons, it's better that humans not eat as much meat. And we can focus on that as an argument. We did have a time a few years back when the bunny community really stepped up and talked out against rabbits as meat. They were selling rabbit meat at Whole Foods here and they picketed and they wrote about it and they yelled about it for almost two years and they got it stopped. So it, it can be stopped. What I'm dealing with is a small percentage of rabbits. My organization is a chapter of House Rabbit Society and we deal with companion rabbits and educate people on their care and try to save as many as possible uh, of the rabbits that are abandoned in an animal shelters. There are organizations that are making some strides in stopping, uh, for example, laboratory experiments. There's a branch of the Humane Society of the United States that works on creating laboratory substitutes so that there's no need for testing on live animals. You know, there's no need to test on rabbits to find cures for human diseases. They're, we're so different. Why do you think rabbits are relinquished so often? They're relinquished because they're fragile animals that require expensive health care. They can be messy if they're not spayed and neutered. And then if they're messy, people don't want them. They have no voice. They're voiceless little creatures. With female rabbits, they have such an extremely high chance of uterine cancer. Pretty much happens in 80 to 90% of the female rabbits. And it can happen anywhere between three to five years of age. So if you're weeding to breed your rabbit until it's two or three or four, you are risking its life because it can either get uterine cancer, it could get breast cancer, it could even get a bleeding ruptured aneurysm in its, in its uterus that causes it to die within a few days. So you're risking death just to, for them to have a litter. You might say, oh, well, I want to have a rabbit that's just like my rabbit and, you know, have, in a, have, a, have a litter, but you could end up with eight to 10 more bunnies and then you have to try to find homes for them. People are always surprised to see Lennon living free roam mm -hmm. like a like a dog or a cat, mm -hmm. you know, when they visit me. They can't believe a rabbit lives there. I guess because they're livestock that they, you know. Right. You expect to see them in like a barn environment right. or something. On a farm. Yeah, mm -hmm. and not like living this metropolitan life. That's why I, I'm passionate about spreading that imagery yeah. so that I can hopefully convert some minds and some hearts you have. I hope so. There is the argument that there are good breeders out there and that they are providing their bunnies with proper care and promoting proper care. What are your thoughts on a good breeder versus a bad breeder? And with all of the new knowledge that you had gained, why didn't you just continue breeding but doing so with the proper care? If I'm being completely honest, I don't think there's any definition of a good breeder. I feel like it's a terrible thing to do to force these rabbits to have kids. I personally will never do it again. I hope nobody ever does because there's enough, there's enough rabbits and bunnies in this world and I just don't agree on it anymore. What do you say to those who argue that there are good breeders who treat their rabbits humanely and sell them to good homes? I would wonder if they are taking back all of the rabbits that people get tired of and no longer want? Are they taking back returns uh, when, when people buy a rabbit from them and say, oh, this is too much work, I didn't realize what was involved? Do you feel good about selling an animal when there are rabbits that are being put to sleep in animal shelters? It's, it's 
hard to justify breeding when we have so many that don't have homes. Why create more rabbits when if you stopped breeding tomorrow, we wouldn't find homes for all of the unwanted rabbits. There are just too many rabbits. There's the argument that, well, if we, everybody just stopped breeding, there would be no more bunnies. Therefore, breeders need to exist. What are your thoughts on this? Do they need to exist? I don't think so. I think uh, it's a bad idea, but there are good and bad breeders, more bad breeders than good, and it just doesn't make sense to be breeding animals when they're dying in the numbers like three million a year being euthanized. If we're gonna have breeders, then they should be uh, and need to be regulated. Yeah, from the hoarding case two years ago, we um, where we rescued 60 bunnies, spayed and neutered them, got them healthy. The worst part was Oscar. He was very badly injured. His ears were in strings and his body was uh, abscessed. And he was in a home for two years. And then this week, two years later, he, he's returned because uh, the family got other pets. Yeah, it's, it's super sad, super, super sad. This is the reality of breeding, right. you know, whether it is hoarding, accidental, purposeful. Yeah. This is what I feel the breeders don't really understand. This is the dark Absolutely. truth about what happens when you put more rabbits yes. out there in the world. Yes. I think because they're small and they're silent. Voiceless, no meow, no bark, no nothing. They can't tell you, they can't talk to you. We have to talk for them. You know, dogs can bark at you and cats can meow and bunnies have nothing, nothing. They have, they need us yeah. badly. One of the most tragic consequences of breeding domestic rabbits is not so much that these unwanted rabbits may wind up at the shelter or rescues. That is a best case scenario. In fact, it is that many of them are dumped on the street, in parks, in garbage cans forced to face starvation or their brutal, painful death. Because people conflate them with wild rabbits, but domestic rabbits cannot survive in the wild. They completely depend on humans. And as one who has gone on many rescue missions, I can confirm how often this happens. Rabbits are not toys, commodities, they're not Easter gifts, they're not disposable. They're smart, loving animals with real feelings, each with unique personalities. The truth is that very few rabbits get lucky. The night I brought Lennon home, she got lucky. But then there are the rabbits, like Oscar, that never find a home.